B-Side Word. Hello and welcome to the B-Side Word podcast. We are a group of friends from around the world and we discuss second page news and share our opinions and thoughts. I'm sat here today with Alex. What's up? I'm here with Dev. Hello. Emma. Hey. CJ. Hello. And today we have a special guest, which is my friend from England. And his name is Aaron. Yo. Woo! Applause background. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Way to make him feel comfortable, guys. We got this. <laughs> That just okay, but we'll jump straight into articles and then you guys can learn about Aaron's weird opinions as we go along, I guess. Uh, okay. But we'll start today with Dev's article and Emma, you can introduce that for him. Okay. All right, Dev. So he brought to the table an article which is about a man, George Pryor, who set himself a challenge to drink 10 Cokes a day for a month straight. Wow. Wow, indeed. Wow. Wow, ten, wow indeed. Ten, like, wow. Um, 330, it's a 350 milliliters, so 3.5 liters of Coke every day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, okay, when you put it like that, that's a lot. That's a lot. And people that's were like, easy. well, that's extreme <laughs> to do 10 a day. And he was like, yeah, but I only, I'm only going to do it for a month. So, therefore, like, it kind of equates to people that drink less, but for a longer period of time. I'm not sure that's how. Uh, um, yeah, that's, I, how that's it works. what I was thinking that's too. Like, uh, but that's what he said. <laughs> yeah, that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah, so basically, before he started, he got like a full checkup from the doctor and he was in like a good bill of health. He had like 9% body fat, um, normal blood pressure, insulin levels were fine, and everything was like all in check. Um, and he was also like health conscious. He was on like a paleo diet, ate lean meats, vegetables all the shebang okay. and yeah. with his with this like experiment he actually stayed on that healthy diet as well so it was just the coke that mm. he was introducing and he just wanted to see what would happen to his body in that time first mm. of all i don't think i could drink 10 cokes a day i don't i i don't know uh, aaron, was like, say, aaron was saying easy that's like one easy. hour for 10 hours you know what when i was at university ten... i literally went through like about Two to three liters of coke every single day. What? For like a year. The full like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For a year. We should write an article and about you. Only, only <laughs> clean my <laughs> university. I only cleaned my room twice. You cleaned your room oh, twice. Man. And when I did clean it, it was just like bin bags full. Me. Uh, oh, oh imagine now in today's, <laughs> we, we'd have been able to collect your bottles for the ten cents recycling thing. You'd have had heaps of we money. Have, yeah. We don't have that in England. We don't have that. England's for shame. So oh. Aaron just collected them as like a pride. A badge of honour. <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 I was impressed. I was really impressed by it. You must have cost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, but I was, ne- I was brought up on fizzy pop. So I was never going to be drinking like squash or anything. But like now I don't drink fizzy pop. And funnily enough, I have lost a lot of weight. Oh, and there you go. And that bloke was henched before. And then he... Oh, yeah, so you're saying the guy on the article, he looked like, he said it was 9% body fat. Is that what you said, Emma? Yeah, that's what he started off at, 9%. But so by 9% the time he finished... Is a, that means you're in shape. That's, or you're that's, yeah, that's skinny. pretty good shape. That's, yeah, oh, he was like health average. conscious. <laughs> and then by the time he finished, his body fat went up 64%. Wow. After one month. It didn't go, it went up to, it didn't go it up went to went 73%, up though. <laughs> It went up. It went by... up sixty four percent relative to what he was on. So he was on nine percent. It must have went up to about fourteen percent. Oh, oh okay. what? Just what do you to mean? clarify, that's how bad stats work. Deb, remember that? Yes. I'm so confused. Yes. Oh, okay. Because I was thinking the former that he was like now seventy three percent body fat. That's fat. That's really fat. Seventy two percent flat. That is that's like like you huge. can't walk. That's like really fat. You can be alive if you're seventy three percent body. Fat. I think if you put him in a bowl, he would take the shape of a bowl if he's 73% fat. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, that's better then than I thought, but still, it's not great. Have you seen the picture? Oh, okay. Basically, he gained 23 pounds, though, which is like 10 kilos. That's a lot for one month. But it's yeah. the thing, when you, yeah. when you paint uh, the picture of like 10 Cokes a day, that sounds like a lot. But when you think of it like a two litre bottle and you said it's less than two of those in a day, like, no. I believe oh, yeah. I could do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I'd enjoy it, but <laughs> mm. just just. I feel like if you have coke, one but... bottle, it's easier to. It's like, oh yeah, that's just one bottle. 
like just yeah. a sort of visual thing. But then, yeah, if you line 10 cans up and you're like, right, I've got to get through all these today, you'd be like, that's a lot. I used to, like, if I drank more than four Cokes in one day and had water later that day, I'd have a taste of metal in my mouth. Like, it, I don't know if it was just getting rid of all the... It was just horrible. It was like it was cleansing my uh, my tongue of all the Coke. It was just... That's... Yeah. This is, is this just me? Is this me? No, no one I else... I don't get that. No, I used to get really, like, croggy throat. Like, my throat just used to feel, like... I don't know, like there's loads of phlegm or something at the back of it. Oh. But that was, I, I don't know. That was the is that, is that, that, that because you had Coke the whole time? You never Did you ever try and wash it down with some water at the end of the day? No, no, no. So like literally if I was going to have a, like, because you probably have 10 drinks throughout the day. You should. You know, but like, yeah. if you like Coke, you're just going to drink Coke all day. Yeah. And if it's in the house, you're definitely just going to drink it. That's well, true. that's me anyway. Yeah. No, that's true. No, it makes sense. Mine's usually tea. I'm a teaaholic. I say that. Um, oh, yeah. But well, I'm I was coffee in, now. I was interacting with someone on Twitter yesterday and they put um, this woman at work with her has only drank coffee and Mountain Dew for seven years because water Whoa. tastes nasty. That was her reason. But coffee water tastes... I agree Dew. with her, except for the... That's I the responded... I responded with, yeah, my mum and my sister think that water tastes nasty and every day I, I'm not convinced I'm from the same bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just can't, I don't like it. I don't like it's water. It's a big stream. <laughs> <laughs> what, that isn't right. on the same what, what do you wash with? Do you just don't like drinking water? Do you, or do you have to wash with Coke as well? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I can, no, I'm fine to wash with the water, but it just, it's not. Like I set myself challenges to try and drink water. I was telling my friends the other day, but, and I'll be good for maybe one day, two days, maybe. And then I don't know. It takes me like the whole day to try and get through like one cup or like one yeah. full bottle of water. But I wish I craved it. Like Dev craves it. Alexander has massive gallon type things that he carries around with him. Like, but I don't Alex, know if you I crave it. Crave it. You it, or do. You just You're like, oh, I really need water. Oh, I need a water. Um, like, I'm to disciplined, but it. when you, I think when you start your day off with water, you crave it throughout the day. Okay. If you, yeah. if you're someone who drinks a lot of it, unlike Emma. <laughs> what about you, yeah. CJ? What's your, what's your go-to drink when you're thirsty? Water. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was thinking about that. He was like, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Um, Talk to you know when you want to quench your thirst. Yeah. I, so and I, then like you like maybe walking down the street and you're like, oh, I'm really parched. Yeah. What? Normally you well, oh, I used to gravitate towards a fizzy drink. Yeah. yeah. But does that make? Oh, you does feel that like it's gonna quench feel... first, but it doesn't. It just makes nah. you thirstier. Yeah, it That's does. What but it's so it, refreshing. It sort of dry, it almost dries out your mouth as well, like because of the yeah. carbonation, and then you're like, oh, now I'm thirsty and I got a dry mouth. <laughs> Man, but it doesn't. It, it does hydrate you though. It doesn't dehydrate you. No. I think that's a myth. I think that's no. But it doesn't make you feel like you know how not, water not immediately make you feel like yeah, not immediately oh, satisfied. But you, I can drink squash or juice much quicker than I can drink water. Mm -hmm. Is that weird? Oh. Same. Uh, maybe, nah. maybe squash has got water. Then. Yeah, but it's a, it's a. It feels like it just slides down my throat, but then water. I'm like, get down there, like. I to oh, put a bit more into it. I'm the same, yeah. Max. I'm the same. Are you? Yes. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can't... But I really enjoy water. I just, when like, if I come back from the gym, for instance, and I'm like really thirsty, I've got a water bottle or something, I'm like, okay, I'm going to just like take half a litre of water or whatever. So, nah, nothing and better than water. Orange juice or something goes down much better than water. I, won I wonder if that's because when the orange juice hits your, your tongue, um, yeah. because it tastes better, it sort of naturally acts to away from your throat a little bit. Maybe. Okay, so oh, no, you sound like a scientist. I'm going to take that. Does <laughs> the water actually taste nice to you? Like, are you like, wow, yes. I love the taste of that water? There's no taste on a hot day. I do. Yeah, just I just don't. I used to hate there water. Isn't like, literally, I can stand it. Mm. But now, like, I can drink it now. But like, you do. You but don't, it don't taste good. You just like this is good for me. I should drink it. Yeah. Or there's nothing else. No, the water tastes it. different in different places. Have you had the water yeah. here? This is maybe like the best taste of water in the world, that type of water. Like Bristol oh, water tastes plain. disgusting. 
No, Max, you, should, you need to be an ambassador morning. for Norway because every I know. week you just sell it. <laughs> Literally, <to us>. Norway <laughs> should make you their tourist ambassador for sure. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Max, I accept. Max you didn't have a response to that. <laughs> How much Coke do you drink now or fizzy fizzy drinks do you drink now at the moment, a day? Now, um, to be fair, I drink squash now and I've lost loads of weight since, Squ- since, squash is since cordial? I stopped drinking yeah. fizzy drinks. You know what? We need to get a uh, before and after of you up on the screen. For- <laughs> oh, no, I've been, I was 19 stone. Really? And then, How tall yeah, are you? So, 6'2". Uh, well, okay. well, maybe What's I'm nineteen about stone? That. Maybe I'm six foot one. I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't good stones. They were bad stones. Yeah. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> bad stones. <laughs> Max, Max used to have to train me. Uh, Alex yeah, has been. Like, I'm sure two sixty two sixty six pounds. By the way, for those. Well, how well, in yeah, kilos? But we need to know in kilos. One hundred and twenty kilos. One hundred and twenty kilos. Oh wow. Oh and now wow. He weighs about eighty. No, no, he's in 90, 90 kilos. Oh Can wow. Can I say this? I didn't know it in stone. So I don't know. Oh yeah, well, what we just did. Yeah, this is the That's first only... time ever that I stood on scale next to Alex and I weighed more. Uh, uh, Alex, oh wow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's got incredible. It's muscle either. Well, it's Max's muscle, I reckon. Yeah. Well, good on you, <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. That's Thanks, awesome. Alex. He's been he's been on a good <laughs> program, you know. <laughs> oh, he's the one giving me my workout program. <laughs> um, I say the heaviest I've ever been is 106 kilos and I was big. So yeah. that gives perspective. Wait, what's that in stone? Uh, um, I was about just under 17. 16. Oh, okay, 17. okay. And like, I'm six foot five and I was muscular at that point. So that gives a perspective for people. Yeah. If you've seen me. I used to be like 44 inch waist. Ooh. So I could only shop at like Primark for jeans. And they'd only have like two pairs of jeans that would fit. Oh man, that's a ma- yeah. that's massive transformation. I was like a tire. I was like the Michelin man. That's impressive. And all of that impressive. because you stopped drinking yeah. Coke. No, 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 no. Well, to be fair, <laughs> I drank Coke through all of that. Yeah. Oh, really? And had a terrible diet. But I just exercised. Oh, see, but if I was trying oh, to do that now, that's what he's like, trying to. Like, I wouldn't be able yeah. to. I wouldn't yeah. be able to drop the weight now. Yes, yeah. But um, oh, this is what I want to do. In the article, it talks about um, like what what happened to him because of all of this. So I thought if I just read some of them and then you can say when you were drinking all that Coke, did you feel the same? Yeah. And then because you've done it your whole life, that's just always been normal for you, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you've never been healthy and like you weren't healthy when you were a kid and then you decided to try this. This is just your status quo. So I just want to bring it up because often people like just go through life all we're tired and stuff, but they never realize it's because they're putting crap in their body like all the time. Yeah, because you were the polar opposite. Yeah. So like my, like we were opposite, like in my house, I wasn't, if I would drink coke, my mum would be like, okay, that's a, that's it for the week. You know, yeah. so she was like, so my whole, so we had just different energy levels. So when I come around like, hey, Aaron, you're like, shut the <laughs> magazine. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> so one of them, but this one might not make sense. He said he had a loss of food appetite. He didn't. Do you have that problem ever? <laughs> no, because <All> right. <laughs> I was fat as anything. I was like, no, but, no. Because I think it like increase. makes you crave sugary things. So did you crave sugary things? Yeah, did it, like, like like my parents didn't stop me. So like I used to go through packets of biscuits, bottles of cokes, like literally. Just right. I feel sound. like I feel like I knew Aaron was coming on, and I got this article specifically for him. I look like that's a why genius. I'm not impressed by it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not impressive. Oh yeah, you were like, like oh, you ten, for months. ten cakes I did a day. this for years. <laughs> You've dedicated your life to this experiment. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm probably gonna lose my teeth <laughs> in like two years time now because of my dedication to fizzy drinks. <laughs> this study. <laughs> um, well, reading all this, I suggest you stop, the, stop the dedication. We talk about low energy and fatigue. Yeah, I'm lazy, yeah. Headaches and, and general malaise. malaise. Is that it? Yeah. I don't know what that Do means. you ever get headaches? Nah. We need uh, to... Unless people were going on. Trouble me. sleeping? Huh? Trouble sleeping? I'm a night child, so I don't know. Maybe you're not a night child. Maybe you just have too much coke. Well, maybe, yeah. Ah, there we go. Early death from heart disease. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> have, you, have, have you experienced that I yet? I severely hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Shit.
Do you want to introduce this? No, I'm fine. You you can introduce okay. it. So uh, this week, Aaron's obviously visiting me in Norway, and I said, "What do you want to talk about?" Um, and we just sort of went through a few subjects, and I wasn't sure if we hit the social media before, so we kind of took it a little bit of a different angle this time. So the title is "The Ultimate Proof That Looking Happy on Social Media Often Masks Real Pain." Yeah, which is quite sad. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but okay. So this is I agree. this is where it comes from. There's somebody somebody put out a tweet saying, "I'm curious if you're comfortable doing so. Post a picture of you that you shared on social media uh, where you were actually having a really tough time in life, even though you look perfectly fine in the picture itself." Yeah. Yeah. Well, because all the pictures always look amazing, right? They're all the pictures. You look at it and you'd be like, "They look like they're at a party, or they're doing like." There's one girl who's I don't know what she's doing, <laughs> singing. Looks like she's singing or something. Uh, there's one where she's in a therapist meeting, but she's actually smiling on a sofa like you would never know that. Um, and I'll just read some of them. So um, there's a good one here, I think. Oh, that top one was good. She says, basically, she's at a party and here you go. Last Halloween, I debuted my best costume ever. I had two big anxiety attacks before coming to the point of taking this pic and my chest was tight all night. In the picture, she looks really happy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's just like, it's. Um, I was talking to Aaron I mean, if you're talking too much now, but I was talking to Aaron uh, about um, if you have 350 friends on Facebook and they've done a survey and it suggested that people think they have about 50 days a year or nearly one a week of days they think are like social media worthy, like they look good and having fun. And the point being that if you have 350 friends and all of them post 50 pics uh, a year, that averages out that when you go on your social media and you scroll through, you get nearly, you get about 49 fresh, great pictures of people having fun in their life. So you just look at them like uh, everybody else in the world, all these 50 people are having fun and I'm not. And it makes you feel depressed. It's just yeah, interesting. But, but, but yeah, because my thought has always been that social media sort of perpetuates mental health problems because, you know, like everyone doesn't put, an honest picture of themselves on their social media. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I've put countless yeah. pictures up where I've had a terrible day and the prob- the only time I've smiled in that day is to go, hey. Yeah. <laughs> like that. I take the picture and pull it up, but it's completely fake. I'm not happy. Yeah, 100%. And, but, I, but I've told all my friends on Facebook that day, look at me, I'm so happy. And anyone else that was feeling bad that day, you know, like my, you know, my stuff in a jealous is like, oh, you know, like look at all these people having fun, and I'm, I, I feel terrible. Yeah, uh, but I, 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 I think it's all a lie a lot of time. So, <clears throat> your social so, media account is just. I, I used to think. I used to think, think like I. Th- I used to think like that. Like when I used to see someone having fun, I used to go, oh, look at this. Like if if I'm at work and I see someone on holidays, I'm like, what the, f- I'm here. He's having a good time. <laughs> Why are you on social media while you're at work? Because I got time. Anyways, um, <laughs> maybe you should be doing jobs, <laughs> and you wouldn't be feeling this. Because uh, it was at lunchtime. And um, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Liar. So I I used to feel that way a lot, and then all of a sudden I I I saw it as a massive problem. Like I see someone having fun, and like I just see myself as a crab. Like if you're not having fun, I'm gonna bring you down with me. Like, and then I was like, I don't want to be a crab anymore. I don't Why want to be crab? crab. Why crab? Because like, a, have you ever seen a crab? Crabs in a bucket. So what do you have crabs? Yeah. Oh, they like tread on each other to yeah, get. Yeah, to... crabs don't push each other out of the bucket. They're like, you're not going anywhere. They bring them down. Oh, they try to get go. on top of each other. Okay. So, oh, no way. um, and I was like, I don't want to be a crab. So like, every time I forced myself, every time <laughs> I saw a picture and I was like, I had resentment towards that picture. I used to, like, mentally just switch and double tap just because. Uh, to make it a habit of enjoying someone else's enjoyment, if that if that makes yeah. sense, and yeah. like it took yeah. it took so yeah. long, man. It was like six months of constantly like, this is a good thing that someone's having fun. This is a good thing that they're trying to show the best version of themselves. And I was double tapping. And as and as 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 much as it, uh, I feel that it like it is fake. It's our reactions to that. Does that make sense at all? Is it like our yeah. reactions yeah. to yeah. other people seeing? I don't know if I've just gone too deep, too quick. Everyone's no, just... I like it. No, no, no. Yeah, I like it too. Yeah, hundred percent. But also, there's a thing whereas if you don't like it, you feel like, like you feel like you have to like it because that's also presenting your best self to to. I'm just not on social media. Yeah. Do so you like it, this uh, son of a bitch? But you like it anyway. 
<laughs> like if oh, you don't yeah, like yeah. it, it's like, oh man. Oh, I just don't look yeah, <clears throat> at all. I think where it can yeah, be on. good, and I don't think we're there yet as society, but where I, where I could see it being beneficial is, in general, negativity is cool. Like whatever it is, negativity always wins out to be the cool thing. And I think by having positivity on social media like that, we can start to look at making good things cooler. Um, so like, even if, so like, for example, me on Twitter, when I go through Twitter, because you always see people you don't follow because other people retweet and like and whatever, um, mm. I make a point to, if I see someone celebrating something or saying something positive about their life, I always retweet it in like, congratulations, or that's awesome or something like that. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. But then I, I can definitely see from the mental health perspective side, like if there needs to be more Yeah, because yeah, well, yeah, what you just said is really good. Yeah, I think, but I then think surely then, we should do that for the negative side as well. So someone tweets or posts something saying, yeah, I, I feel awful today and I'm really struggling. Maybe oh. we should like retweet that and go, well, you know, what thank I do with you those. for being brave enough to pull it on. Yeah. Personally, like for me, too. what I do with those is I actually, um, so I don't think I've, have I talked about it? I don't think I've talked about this on here, but I, I went through some mental health issues last year and it was quite a tough time for me. And I know as a yeah. man, especially like it's something that people don't talk about. Um, mm. if you look at like suicide rates for men is a lot higher because to them that's an easier escape than actually talking to someone so when I see like I've, I've noticed people people are starting to talk more about when they feel bad they're not necessarily in yeah. like they haven't got a mental health crisis or anything but they're just like oh, I'm just feeling down at the moment this I'll personally message them because I don't want to put it out there for yeah. everyone yeah, to see yeah, no, and I'll bad. say look if you need to talk to someone like I talk to me I, i'm putting completely open i'll listen to you like i understand what it can be like so yeah like hmm. the positive stuff i always I, I guess i could do it publicly with the negative as well but i don't know i just don't know really how to handle that no no i reckon you're like love like, what you said is much better yeah, yeah i like that like, yeah, reaching out to them uh, just yeah. messaging them and offering support is a lot nicer yeah i also, think um, go on emma no no continue to round up what you were saying I, yeah I was just going to say that I think the idea of like this article and bringing these things to the forefront is positive. I think it needs to be done, um, especially because social media mm. it is presenting this idea that mental health is something that we all deal with, especially everyone at some point in their life deals with something when, when it comes to mental health. And I feel like the more this discussion's had, the better it is, the more people can be open about it and the healthier we can be. What do you think about, like I've seen people, I know people that have had really bad mental health issues like really bad depression anxiety and they said one of their comments was i feel like on social media people are kind of making it's like a trend it's like it's almost trendy to be like oh i'm struggling and they feel worse for it almost it's just like somebody's had a day off work because they're tired isn't the same as me physically can't move because i've got an anxiety attack and i can't leave their breathing they feel like they're gonna die they literally feel like they're gonna sink into themselves and they say sometimes it feels like because they're saying oh i'm struggling because i can't <laughs> their, their example was the diamond ring wasn't as big as I wanted it to be I just don't feel good about myself right now uh, it's like well it, you it can't took... compare that to like like it feels like now if I say I've got anxiety they're like oh that's not a problem because they've dealt with someone who didn't really have anxiety yeah so are uh, you me, talking about people that are just complaining you. versus someone that has anxiety yeah but that's the point it's that people his point was that um, he thinks on social media people claim they have like mental health issues just to be They're jumping on that bandwagon right right okay yeah okay. then let me also let me flip it on you and i'm not by any means suggesting this is the case but just to mm. to put a different perspective out there say the person with the ring it wasn't as big as they wanted and they it makes them feel bad One if, they, if they've been raised in a certain way where materialism is something that's extremely important to them mm. it the way they may feel to that may actually mm. be quite bad. It may be something that negatively impacts them mentally. But then yeah. because we don't value the materialism to that level, we would say, oh, that's mm. insignificant. So then when yeah. other people look at someone who is going through like crippling anxiety over something that we may see, that's really simple. Like that's, you're not really depressed. You're just complaining. Yeah, but to them, it's so just kind of a difficult. Yeah, it is difficult to. Yeah. There's different yeah. levels. Everyone has different levels, I guess. Yeah. And it is a but spectrum as well, isn't it? Like it's not a case of, you either have an mental health issue, a mental health issue or you don't. It's mm. there's different sever levels of severity, and it's. I think it's. Yeah. I think it's a really. I understand what you're saying about the bandwagon thing, and I, there's definitely going to be people out there who are doing that. But it's just a really difficult one to 
affects state what other people are going through. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah. Well, I just, besides- like, <clears throat> to me, social media is a thing where you're under so much pressure to come across in a certain way and you want to put your best, the best version of yourself across that you don't just use it as the platform that it's, this is my life and I'm allowing you to share it and see and, you know, like be a part of my life. But I'm going to, I'm only going to show you the best parts. Yeah. 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 I'm only going to sn- show you a snippet of two minutes in the week. Yeah. Yeah. Where, yeah. you know, I can make you believe that I have this incredible life. But now, so I, I think that can be difficult for a lot of people to watch. It's the same yeah. with bloggers on YouTube. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the, have you seen the guy that he um, basically, he goes around uh, to like in, I'm not sure where it was in America, but he went, there's like houses which are worth millions of pounds and they're on the beachfront and stuff. And he just goes to the viewings and he gets loads of pictures in those houses. And then he goes for a test drive in like these amazing cars and stuff and take those pictures there and he just goes down to like where all the yachts are and he just sort of hops on the back of someone's boat gets a really quick <laughs> picture and then jumps off and he was just what? his point was he just proven like how easy it is for people on social media to like look so much better than they are yeah. and yeah and the thing is not everybody does that obviously to some degree a lot of people do it I, i'm probably even guilty of that but then what never happens is no one makes us life worse right no one no. ever says i'm gonna pretend i can't afford to buy this or i'm gonna pretend so oh, it's man. the average that's, of what you see is always going to be higher than what reality That's what reality I'm going to do. Is, you know I mean? That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a poor yeah. man on Instagram. I'm going to go, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to be at Macca's and I'm going to show like $2, $2, uh, like oh, whatever. And then uh, like, you're going to get loads of backlash whenever. Like a small <laughs> meal. I'm gonna, a small meal. I'm going to have like four ninety five. I go, I can't afford a small Big Mac meal. <laughs> and just like have my hand full of coins and then like a, the, the menu. Oh my god! You should, have, you be should like... have, a happy, have a happy meal next. People relate to that. You should go to no those sweet shops when they weigh how how much it costs for the sweets. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you should go oh. there and put it on, and they'll be like, "That's five pound." You're like, "Oh, okay," and then just take some out. Yeah, take and it. it back. <laughs> so <laughs> get out. That's four pound. Oh, I still yes. can't afford it. <laughs> so I'm gonna be the poor <laughs> man on Instagram. Oh man! How oh, much maybe I've done that as a kid. But this <laughs> social how how we Bro. present ourselves on social media isn't just a social media thing. It's actually a, a thing in 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 life in general, in sociology in general as anyway. Yeah. Um, Irving Goffman uh, came up with a theory about presentation of self and he took it from a William Shakespeare book, um, book, the theatre show, whatever, play, whatever. Um, and in the <laughs> William Shakespeare play, he says, all the world's a stage and all the men and women are merely players. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. And Goffman took it further, basically saying that he doesn't believe anyone has their like a true self. So he believes that everyone's roles, all the hundreds of roles that people play are the true self. Ooh. Okay, so this next one is my article and it is about a bridezilla. I've called it Bridezilla's Demands. Um, but the title is Bride Branded Unreasonable Tyrant Over Strict List of Wedding Guest, guest Demands. So basically, this bride's sister has let loose on Reddit about the bride's demands on the guests attending her wedding, right? So I think she... The bride's sister has not been involved in the wedding planning, but she's just heard from the mum all the dramas, okay? So he say? He say, but apparently it's true. Yeah. We'll go with it's true. Okay. So and wait, wait. She chose Reddit as the platform. Yeah. To- so she said, look, I wasn't going to say anything until yesterday when I got this email. Okay. So she got an email along with all the other guests from the bride, and it was the rules, attendance requirements. Okay, so imagine you've got this wedding planned. You're all like, oh, yeah, I've got a wedding, you know, in a couple of weeks or whatever. And then you get an email saying these are your requirements to attend. Decline. (laughs) So. (laughs) Wait, what were the requirements? So the requirements were telling the men what color ties to wear. Okay, I can, it is a bit, mm, but you can kind of, okay, if she's got a theme, you know, maybe. That's why. That's a thumbs up from us. We that, give that one a thumbs up. That one's up. fine. Okay, we'd, that. we'd still attend, right? If, if you got told sort of what, what tie to wear. I'm out. 
You out? <laughs> CJ's already out. <laughs> <laughs> After um, wearing a tie, CJ says, CJ's just left. <laughs> <laughs> the men are not allowed any facial hair. Oh, if they do, Ooh, they cannot be in any of the pictures. <laughs> I'm definitely out. <laughs> my, my mind grows quick. Uh, okay, I'll still go. I'll still go. You'll go clean shaven. What double? if you had Can a big beard and you'd been working on this beard? You've got the beard beard creams or whatever. Shave your hipster. You've got everything <laughs> going on. Yeah, I've done all of that. Would you shave so, it for someone's I wedding? Worse for it. <laughs> Who's still in? Who's still in? I mean, I mean, I mean. Okay, so I'll still go. Am I allowed I'll stubble? Can I have stubble? No, no stubble. No facial hair. Okay. Look, just shave and we'll go. I'm not It'll be a good day. No, I'm not doing okay. That. I'm All not right. so. You go on your own, Aaron. Um, no, you go on your own. If I'm, you're... I'm not the only one still I'm going. With, I'm, I'm, going, going I'm going. I'm going. If your other half. Dev, Dev, are you still hold going? on. So you're going to look like a 12 year old. Dev loves himself. Of course, Dev's going. He wants everyone to see his 10 out of 10. <laughs> right, okay. me, me and Dev are I, still going. I feel like I was oh, like, said that in a safe place, Maxi. And now I feel like I'm getting. No, we like it. We like it. Hundred percent on the confidence. Well, there's so not Emma yet. Emma's out on the facial hair one. <laughs> yeah, three. No, 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 Emma's still going. Three no. left. Hey! Three, three gone. <laughs> okay, so you guys are going right. Your other halves—they've got this long, flowy hair. Their requirement is they either have to cut their hair <laughs> to, to, to shorter than to shorter than um, shoulder length, or they've got to put it in a ponytail. Oh yeah, those right. two options. They can't wear it down. Okay, a ponytail. Yeah, it's all right. A ponytail. Okay. Right. So we're still going. Are you still allowed to go at this point? Ems, you have to wear your hair in a ponytail. By yeah, now, are you feeling you. a little bit like? I'll make a decision oh. for her. Yeah. I was out of time, thank God. <laughs> um. Okay. No one is to talk to the bride or groom alone. So I, I just wanted, if you wanted to just go up and wish the the groom, who might be one of your really good besties or whatever you're not allowed to do it alone you cannot talk to the bride or groom what do you alone. Mean alone so to bring a friend you... bring a friend or maybe they have to be together like the bride and groom must be together the whole time maybe she yeah. sounds like a ball breaker oh, yeah no i don't like this woman yeah she's Wait, like, it's she has so already in a handbag <laughs> i can't i've got to talk to both of them two together or i don't I have know if it's have a I don't know if me. it's you've got to talk Which to them two together or you have to have someone else <laughs> with you while okay, talking wait, to wait, them. Wait, wait, wait. Before I answer this, where are we eating? Where's the reception at? Don't know. Is it like high class? Is it oh. high class? Oh, it's pretty high class. The wedding's costing about 50 grand. All right, I'm coming. I'm going. If, if yeah, the, I don't have to talk if to If the food's them. good, <laughs> I'm, I'll make an effort. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> have to talk I'm, to them. I'm a fat man. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> well, you might say that until you get to further down the list. Okay. Um. So no one's to take any pictures. None. I don't Other than the photographer. I don't take no, now. I'm cool with that. So I'm still there. Pictures that's right. anyway. Yeah, yeah that's right. Going. Baby yeah. face anyway. I've got no facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to attend, if you want to be let in this venue, your gift must be worth at least three hundred US dollars, which is about two hundred and thirty no, pounds. <laughs> Straight out. I'm out. Or you have to give at least two hundred and fifty dollars cash. If you're not going to do it, you're not coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, uh, how will she know yeah. until after when she opens That's it? That's right. Yeah. She yeah. probably has someone checking the envelopes. <laughs> and then they're, they're like, just, sorry. Entry, entry, entry. Uh, I've recommended retail price. I just draw a piece of art and be like, this is 10 grand. <laughs> and then they can figure it out later. <laughs> or I owe you. <laughs> I owe you. Yeah. Or just get them a voucher. I just don't really, I mean, not really claim it. <laughs> or you get like a 300, 300 pound of little gift vouchers or something. <laughs> Do they take? Yeah. But it sounds like they need the money. Marriage counseling. Does she take check? I do not know. If she takes check, but that was the list Did of demands. I don't know if there was any more demands, but I mean, she was crying like she's been breaking down over like what I guess some would consider to be minor things. But yeah, I don't know. If I got that so, list of requirements. I kind of wouldn't really want to be attending after reading them all. You'd be like, oh, this I've, is going to be like such a downer. I've got a question for you about that then. Would you, do you judge the bride more or the people who still attend? I'm judging the groom. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> judging the groom? Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Sure, I don't think he wants to marry her. Yeah, like what? I'm that's I, what it's I like. If I was no him and she came up with that list, I'm like, yeah, what am I doing? Someone else is there listening. That's what I thought about that. He sounds thought, like he might need help. Yes. Yeah. It sounded like to, that to me made me think that she didn't want someone to convince him to not go through with it. Oh, man. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, if something anyone man. puts their hand That's up at the wedding. Then, yeah. Well, why else could you not talk to him alone? Oh. Because he needs another celebrity. That's what I thought anyway. 
She's crazy. But I can't believe she what, asked women to cut their to hair all the time. Like, probably because she was the only long Do we know who this bride the bride is? No, I think she was crying because the husband bought the the wrong shade of off-white napkins, like stuff like that. So she's a full bridezilla, but... Wrong oh shade of off-white. Mm. Off-white is a shade, right? Yeah. White has off-white. Well, I thought there was only one shade of off-white. So the sister <laughs> who got this email <laughs> was putting on Reddit because she was like, guys, I really do not want to attend, but I don't know what to do because they're calling me selfish for the... For, for me saying I don't want to attend under these rules. Like, even the parents were like, you're being so selfish. This is her day. And she's like, but seriously? Like... But bitch crazy. Have you seen these rules? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what was the feedback on Reddit? Yeah. Oh, I that this to be cray cray. More than the article, I love the comments that you... Like, on Twitter and on Reddit. And Reddit are just harsh. They don't even... There's no filter. And it's just, bam, you're an idiot. Like, it's it's Cray. full on. I feel so for the guy. Like, I I think ma- imagine, like, like he's never making that. another decision for the rest of his life by the sounds of it. That's a thing. That's a thing. Like, there's like, there's so many feel, of these marriages I, that like um they get divorced within the first three six, to six months because I was like, first six weeks. <laughs> I mean, look, you're yeah. saying you feel sorry for him. If a hundred people are ten, they've got twenty five grand's worth of gifts. There. Yeah, but but it sounds if he doesn't get to decide <laughs> what they spend the money on, he doesn't get to decide yeah, if he can talk grand. to his friends. He doesn't get to decide if he can go out with his friends. He doesn't get to decide what he can do. If he, if, if he buys white and it's the wrong yeah. white, he gets in trouble. Do I really, would you really want to be yeah. in that kind of relationship? I've got a question for you, Alexander, because you made a point, right? It's, um, yeah. If, if you pay or you give this present and they break up within three months, do you get it? Do you yeah. ask for the shit back? Oh, do you ask for I your present? You would? You can't. Would, Why? Yeah. I gave you it for the yeah. purpose of you being married. If you then would you actually married, ask for it back though? I don't. <laughs> even if you wanted it back in your back. head, you wouldn't ask. Oh, can I have my gift back, please? <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like a good money. Maker, if I spent, <laughs> if I spent that much money on you, yeah. If it was like a toaster, nah, I'm alright. It's yeah. like two hundred and fifty dollars. Well, three hundred. Out three hundred. I don't even spend three hundred dollars on myself in one go. How much I do you guys put in winning cards? Let alone someone Not three hundred dollars. Depending what relationship I, yeah. a relationship I have with them. Yeah. Three hundred dollars is a lot. All like, right. There's like an unspoken rule that you should pay. You should give them the amount of your meal, right? You should give them the amount that your meal costs. That's what an unspoken rule is. How do you know how much your meal costs? How do you know what your meal costs? Do they yeah. tell you? I don't know, but I mean that's that's like the <laughs> etiquette, but, I guess. Uh, is that a thing? It's a thing. We normally put twenty five pound in. I did. Oh, but and I feel a lot better if I've got more people. Yeah, like so, you put it all yeah. in. Oh, a we done this. Oh, Dan, so we had yeah. a we had a friend that we were, we were she was pretty we were pretty close to her. Like we were quite close friends. And you, how much did you give? Twenty twenty five pounds. I don't give no more than twenty five pound. I gave forty. I think it depends on the financial situation normal. you're in as well. But Maxie, yeah, how I, do you, I didn't even have dinner. I, I one minute warning. I, I went to the after party. I didn't get anything yeah. out of it. How about Maxie, your sister? Like when your sister gets to the age of um, of marriage. Oh, my sister's never getting married. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think she wants to be a nun. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're going to force her into. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. She decided. Go <laughs> Is a thousand pounds too much? A thousand pounds? As a gift? What? As a gift. Like yes. for your sister. What is he paying for the wedding? Yes. That's a like, lot yes. of money. Because oh, how many wait, Siege, how many how many times have you gone to a Lebanese wedding? I'm not Lebanese. No. <laughs> you don't have to be Lebanese to go to a Lebanese wedding. <laughs> well, why would I go to Lebanese from Lebanese? <laughs> no, like because all our mates were Lebanese. H- have you been to a Lebanese? Like I felt pressured. Oddly enough, no. Well, the there Lebanese was... weddings you have to give money, right? There's a lot so of money. You. I've been to like uh, a Syrian one. Is it the same? It was half Syrian, half Maltese. Yeah, yeah so yeah, were you that's, giving, is you it giving give money a lot there. of money? Um, the, the Syrian people, they gave a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. they do. That's yeah. the, it's tradition, because like, when it comes around, they give money, like a lot of money. I suppose these people drink a lot of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I, I don't, don't, but, well, I don't know. I think it depends, it depends a lot on like my situation as well. Like, right yeah. now, I wouldn't give a thousand pound if my sister got married. But if mm-hmm. I guess I was like... My sister's a lot younger than me. Yeah, that's what she's, I'm saying. Uh, yeah, she's 12. So when she gets to like 40, when she gets married, 
I guess as soon as she comes be, out the conference, I'll be in a position then when I might have a thousand pounds to give her. And inflation is only worth about ten of <laughs> You know what? Let's put this in a bit of perspective. When someone's getting married, they're now confirming that they have a joint income. I'm single. They're getting double the money in already. Why do they need more of mine? <laughs> Yeah, that's true. They should be giving me money to go to their wedding. No, it's usually <laughs> the worst wedding guest ever. You're going to buy him a toaster. You're going to pick up the toaster back day. after the first two practical. weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh? Maybe you buy, you won't oh, get a toaster. Oh, man. I, I, you lot dropped it. I don't know what's going on with my connection. You lot keep dropping. You dropped it in out a bit. Okay. And also, a uh, wedding, a free bar. Not that all of them. changes things. I'm more inclined to give more money if there's a free bar. Yeah, that's but true. But do they, are they going to tell you on the invitation that it's a free bar or are you like sort of carrying extra I cash that, just in case? Announced. I think if, it, if it's a yeah. free bar, you publish it. You're like, what? This is a big yeah. deal. <laughs> you, want, you want as much points as you can for that. That's a big move. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's why people it. attend for free bars. You, like, if you want a lot of people there, free bar, the way forward, that's the most effective way. Don't worry about going all out on the suits. You go H&M suit <laughs> or Primark suit. Free bar, and then I reckon that's a. <laughs> Have you seen um Jamie Fox shares a story on the um uh what's his name Nick Nicky Fallon no something Fallon, Fallon. Jimmy 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 Jimmy. 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 You seen him share a story about um how he like threw a party for I think it was like P Diddy. Yeah. Yes. Back in the day. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And they went. Have you, have you seen it? Yeah. yeah. And they talk about the spread of food he has there and stuff, and it was yeah. like a best party. He's like, <laughs> sixty-five dollars like, in Kentucky. I can throw you a party for a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'll throw you the sickest party in LA for a hundred bucks. And he's like, what? How? And he just buys like a load of KFC yeah. and he just makes sure he gets the right people there that can sing. And then they're like, hey, Jamie, man, this this is real good chicken. Where'd you get it from? And he's like, ah, oh, it's KFC, man. <laughs> it's all these like millionaires just munching on KFC, like having the best time ever. But it's just so like, funny. be real, like. But honestly, that's true though. At my wedding, maybe, but. I was gonna have food trucks. I like fruit. So I, I like the food, food trucks food, idea. And then I'm just gonna invite loads of food trucks. No, that's a good idea. That's, that's actually like foods outside. I like that. Yeah, I like that's. That. Uh, but would they have to pay for their own food? Yeah, you gotta pay for your own food. Yeah. So do you expect oh. gifts as well? But it's like. <laughs> oh, oh, Debbie's out. I thought you were paying for the food truck. Nah, man. No, oh, yeah, no, I like well, I like the food trucks, but I don't want to pay. Yeah, that's cool. Emma's like, I want food. So, so my question is, if you go on out with this uh, a mad, mad ass chick, right? She's just like, you, you're having the time of your life. And then she turns into a bridezilla. Are you... You yeah. question. Are you dumping her before the wedding? I'm thinking about it. Uh, if, if the, if the requirements, okay. if they come up with these requirements, are you, are you just like, Dep- nah? Depends. Because it could just be the pressure of the wedding. Yeah, well, she made a statement, something like, well, in the email, she said something along the lines of, um, please, uh, please think of us during this stressful time. <laughs> As in, like, please adhere I'm to really, our rules I'm during really this stressful time. I'm really stunned if for this guy. <laughs> that, yeah. That brings I would up definitely, my, if, yeah. I would negotiate and be like, this isn't, not negotiate, that's maybe the wrong word, I'd be like, I don't think we should be doing this. And then if you can consist, I guess it's just how that goes, isn't it? Like, you yeah. understand... How they come to this conclusion? If you can logically tell me why you come to this conclusion, then maybe we'll go ahead a bit, and I'll I'll back you up. But yeah, I can't see how you logically say everyone should give three hundred dollar like three hundred dollar gift. That's that's mental. That's probably out of all of them. That's the craziest one. Yeah, and because both sets of parents were helping pay you for the wedding. You reckon that's the craziest one? You don't think yeah, shaving don't think and cutting hair and cutting hair is pretty crazy. Um, I think I think putting your hair up is like uh, no. Yeah, but, but why? If she, if she had just said really if she said I, I guess I maybe just for one photo like. <laughs> oh my head! So you, I'm guessing she's gonna have really long hair, and she's gonna come in like a, yeah. a hairy person. Yeah, you can imagine she just comes in, just <laughs> cuts her hair. But like she could have said, she does that. That's mental. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, I told you, like you can come to the wedding. Oh, she give you a hairband instead of cutting your hair. <laughs> she's <laughs> just got all these hairbands hair on the no, side. She's gonna be like, "What is that? That's not shoulder length." <laughs> 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 See, but it's, it's gonna get messed up. Like, why do you why do you think she would do that? Because the only reason I can think is like she's doing that so when people when the photographer takes pictures, she her looks wedding looks better. Than other but you seem like on yeah, but bride, she could have said no they one wear a makeup dress and the, the bride wear a really nice dress, right? It's yeah. Like yeah. That, but for everyone, yeah, hmm. yeah. Because some brides stand out. some brides don't oh, like you, their. You, you're gonna stand out because you're the one getting married. Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> no, you might stand out enough. 
if I go to this woman's wedding, I'm going to go in a white dress. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say that. It wasn't a rule. It wasn't a rule. I have to admit, it I, wasn't in You, you, you would stand that more than a bride. On my white dress. <laughs> But but just, I'm just, going in a white But dress. you better be shaven. <laughs> look, and you better wear look, the right clothes high with that white dress. Um, just make sure to have I've got a tie on suits. and I'm wearing a white dress. Yeah. <laughs> no, right? I think it should be off white <laughs> and the correct off white. <laughs> Here's That's the 300 funny. pounds. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shaven. I'm wearing a white thigh. dress from a charity shop. 50 pounds. <laughs> These are Zimbabwe dollars. <laughs> you didn't specify. Zimbabwe dollars. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> No, I think you know what? You've actually just made me think I would attend this wedding and I would try and do it in the most like ridiculous way to yeah. follow the rules but yeah. still yeah. get my way. Actually it would be fun to attend just to sort of just observe just observe like everyone with these rules and if people are sticking to them and just what just, happens. Just imagine Imagine the church, you know, like church with the big doors and they've got the doors open and you've got the whole um I guess congregation, they're all just stood outside looking through the doors and not allowed in. Oh. <laughs> not allowed to step foot in. But then they, they peek they peek through the keyhole and then Alex is standing there in a white dress with his tie. <laughs> Clean shaven. Uh, that was good. I think that was good. All right, thanks for listening, everyone. If you want to find out more, you can find us at The B-Side Word on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, anywhere that you listen to podcasts. Obviously, if you want to watch, go on YouTube. It's been a great one. Catch you on the next one.